All right, so good morning, everybody. So my name is Jesse Gachapis. I'm um, an SE with, with Druva. Um, there's my lonely Twitter handle there. It's kind of boring if you go to it. Um, you know, a little bit about me though. I, uh, so I've been doing uh, enterprise backup now for close to 18 years now. So I started my career at a, what was called online backup back in 2000. Uh, that was before the term cloud was actually kind of being used on a mass scale. Um, and we used to sell it at 100 bucks a terabyte. So or it's 100 bucks a gigabyte. All right, so I can see how much uh, things have shifted uh, in that 18 years. Um, but I've been at, um, you know, since then I was, uh, I was at the Iron Mountain Choir, my, the company that I was working for then. Uh, I've been at Commvault, I've been at EMC, uh, and a couple other companies in between, but all f focused on, uh, on enterprise backup. So I'd like say I've either competed against or architected every solution kind of in this space. Uh, so I have a good grasp on you know, how the uh, landscape looks. So, and that kind of plays into this. So, um, so on the right hand side is, is kind, of our, um, kind of a simplified view of our architecture within AWS. And you know, I bring this up because everything that uh, Curtis and Jasper have gone into around our architecture being uh, cloud native, um, you know, really um, revolves around this, right? Being able to leverage um, all these services that, that are uh, they're being offered. Um, in AWS for the specific use cases that we want to use them for, um, for our, you know, our services. So, you know, kind of at the top left here, and again, this is, this is the plumbing, right? We, 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 you know, the customer doesn't care, right? At the end of the day, it doesn't matter to them uh, unless they ask the question and we can show them, you know, what it means. Um, but behind the scenes, right, we have our configuration services that are kind of the, the first stop as the, the data flows in or the user floats, floats in, um, you know, regard, um, regardless of which product um, we're, we're protecting on the endpoint side, whether it's servers, endpoints, or cloud applications. Um, and then from a, um, an AWS region standpoint, we have the uh, kind of the, 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 um, the, the, the Juva cloud file system, right? So the, uh, uh, our storage and our architecture. So being able to... Um, you know, kind of starting with the storage nodes, right? So we have compute nodes, these are EC2 nodes. They're stateless, uh, but they're controlled by, um, by elastic load balancing and scaling. So as load comes in, or, or we either know a load's gonna come in, or we've sensed a, new load, uh, a lot of uh, data flowing in, these things are able to scale up on demand, right? So, and, and automatically, right? So as that load comes in, these, these, uh, these servers are scaling up with that load, spreading it across that load, and, and processing the data as it comes in. You know, if you take a, you know, from a, an equivalent standpoint, you know, a media server, a storage node, and a backup infrastructure, it's the ability to scale those up dynamically on demand, which you simply can't do in a data center, right? I mean, you, you buy your media agents or your media servers, you configure them, you deploy them, and then, you know, if you, if you feel if that thing gets uh, oversubscribed, you buy another one, deploy it, and, and then spread the load across the two. So what we're doing here is we're auto-scaling all these, all these resources there. Um, Curtis mentioned it, but from an uh, architecture standpoint, what we do is we leverage Dynamo Database for our dedupe engine and our metadata engine. Um, why that's important, again, is from scalability, resiliency, durability, right? So if you think about that as the dedupe engine, as the, either the dedupe uh, index or the dedupe database, depending on um, what, you, what you're familiar with, the, our ability to scale both from a performance standpoint and a kind of uh, uh, management standpoint is, is really important, right? It gives us the ability to, 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 to scale infinitely from a, um, from a deduplication standpoint, from a managing the, uh, lots and lots of data. And then down, uh, going down a little bit to the S3 and in the, uh, in the Glacier from the storage platform standpoint, you know, again, why that's important in this industry is that it's infinitely scalable, highly durable, and, uh, and, we, can and we can just simply grow that, that namespace over time. Um, you, know, we, we, you know, if you think about backup, again, the most popular configurations, right, you back up to one, you replicate to the other, and then maybe you go to a tertiary copy to tape or, or that. You know, we're doing all this within object storage, right? So we're keeping three copies of the data within that, uh, within that region, you know, in each availability zone. We're doing data crunching on it, right? We're doing readbacks of the data, ensuring that the data is good, um, you know, that's recoverable. All that's built into our flows, but the actual physical storage of the data is, you know, highly redundant, just natively, right? We don't have to replicate it to another place. And then we're aging that data off uh, into Glacier. So what we do is we keep 90 days worth of snapshots in, in S3, and then everything older just moves over, over to Glacier. From a customer experience standpoint, um, the only difference is anything from S3 is uh, available instantly, they can restore it. If they go to Glacier, is a uh, four hour SLA for us to defreeze that data, and then they can start restoring it. Um, again, built into their cost, they don't get whacked you know, when they go back that far, it's all built into to our licensing model, so they don't care. Is there any possibility of extending that sort of life cycle out? Say I want 
faster access on data that's more than 90 days. Yeah, we, we get asked that a lot. I mean, technically, there's no reason we can't do it. Um, it comes to our come to our cogs, right? Is that's kind of the optimal. Um, but it's something that there's no reason why we couldn't do it if it became a really big requirement. I mean, 90 days in, in warm typically covers it. Um, you know, if it's anything urgent, they generally have to go back. You know, it's going to come within the first week or the first couple of days. So, what about speed? Yeah, like restore um, speed. Yeah. yeah. More importantly. So it's a, you know, it's a question we get a lot, right? Um, so it depends, right? I mean, it's, you know, the biggest bottleneck is going to be the bandwidth, right? Is what, how much bandwidth do you have coming down to, you know, where, you're, where we're sending the data? Generally, the bottleneck is not on our end. We're actually able to, you know, take the data out really fast and send it back. It's, it's you know, between, between us and the, and the customer. Um, so we do offer, um, you know, for customers who want to have an on-site copy, we, we do have what we call cloud cache. So and I'll get into that. But if it, we, basically, from an architecture standpoint, we can put a piece of hardware out here, and you can keep that local, keep 30 days of backups local. All that's synced to the cloud automatically. Um, but any, any recoveries you would do from the last uh, 30 days could come from a local backup. Um, so we have some customers who, met, who, uh, who leverage it. Um, you know, I'll say nowadays a lot of customers, when they're looking at us as a solution, as part of their um, kind of evolution in this space, um, they look at bandwidth as the answer to that, right? As opposed to, they don't, a, lot, a lot of our customers don't want infrastructure, right? So that putting a, a local copy there, if they can get away with putting more bandwidth, then, and then we can meet those RTOs, then, then that's good enough for them, right? It's, it's, you know, it's flexible. So you kind of choose what you want to do. But we have had customers that, uh, as they you know, eliminated all the local infrastructure from a backup standpoint at the sites, bandwidth at each of those sites, increasing the bandwidth was part of this project. Because right, they knew they're just going to go straight to the cloud with it. They're reducing everything, and it played in perfectly. And then direct connects and the other option as well. Right? So we do have customers that can use a DX and, and deploy that as well. Um, but again, and then on the uh, on this side right here, and you know, I'm going to go into more detail on this stuff. But so um, we do have integration with customer VPCs. It's a, a cloud recovery feature that we have within the solution. So it's just it's the only licensable feature that we have in addition to the uh, regular licensing. But if a customer is you know has a presence within AWS today and they have, and they're leveraging VPCs, um, we have a, the ability to take for uh, VMware workloads, do the automatic the orchestration of the uh, the export and restore of uh, of um, EC2 instances as uh, AMIs. And put them into the customer's VPC, and then they can they can boot up in there for, you know, DR or test dev or anything like that. And we we in the you know, in the VPC they they deploy what we call our AWS proxy, and then they configure what we call DR policies in our console, and we we handle the rest. And it's a one way out, right? From here, we don't have access into the customer's VPC, but they can configure everything uh, that they need there. So, I don't know why I just suddenly thought of a question. On the previous um, slide, if you were a customer who had multiple um, locations around the yeah. world, would that mean that you'd exist in many yeah. of your regions? Yeah. And, so, and that means that they would effectively have separate pieces that you'd somehow combine? Right. Yeah, so, so this piece right here would be spun up around the globe, right? So the... Um, so we can keep the data in each of the regions. So we're in 13 regions uh, globally now, plus the GovCloud. So, um, so if a customer has a presence in Germany, say they could leverage a German data center, a German AWS region, and then North America, right? And then the dedupe is within the region. We don't cross dedupe across right. regions. I was thinking more about search, really, that mm -hmm. if, if you wanted to do a search, that you must be pushing out the search request and then aggregating the results back Correct. Yeah. across regions. So on the, um, yeah, like on Instinct, and I'll, I'll show you our search functionality, but yes, that's, that's able to go out. It's going out against everything, and then it's coming back with all right. the results. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um, some key characteristics, right, about the cloud file system, right, the Druva cloud file system. Uh, you know, number one, number one is durability. We kind of went into that. But this idea, you know, S3 and Glacier as that storage platform versus block, right? Preston, um, Curtis went into the, uh, you know, the, the, the cost savings from our standpoint, why it makes sense to, you know, architect it from a cloud native standpoint. But also from a use case standpoint, when we're talking about backups, right, copies of the, the block of the data, right? We're doing global dedupe on the data. The data, you know, the blocks are written down onto the storage platform. Uh, but then, you know, we're, 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 we're creating three copies of that, right? So from a durability standpoint, it's what, 10, 11, nines of, of data durability on those blocks of data, right? So, um, the the uh, the cases of data loss are, are very very low. 
Um, and again, the, our service itself within our software, we're doing you know last snapshot readbacks, making sure that that stuff is all there from a recovery standpoint. So when the customer does a restore, that they actually get what they want to come back. But from a physical management standpoint, you know, Esther and Glacier are core to that um, storage piece of it. And then Dynamo, right? Um, say a lot of nice things about it, but it's it's a you know it's a again from um, you know as someone who's uh, you know configure dedupe appliances and, and, and backup software with native deduplication in it uh, from a configuration and scalability standpoint, you know, I think it's one of the biggest challenges in the space. Right? Is, um, you're either physically going to run out of space, right? I mean, an appliance can only be so big and have so many shelves before you got to get a new one. And then um, from like a dedupe database standpoint, it can only scale so large before you got to separate that out, deploy another one, manage it, and so on. Um, Dynamo solves that problem, right? From a scalability and performance standpoint, we go up and down as, as required. Um, and again, three-way repl uh, uh, replication of that uh, of that data, that metadata. Um, there regional replication with that because there's the the built-in replication within the region mm -hmm. with DynamoDB. So as far as what the customer, uh, so as the AWS managed service yeah. for DynamoDB, there's the the inherent since it's a managed service, yeah. there's the inherent replication yeah. within the other region. Yeah. So is there multi-region being done or not? No. No. So S3 can, uh, some customers, are, we don't have a customer demand asking for multi-region for other reasons, but uh, most customers solve by the, the DR workflow. The, the, the backing of the West Coast, they want DR workflow in the East, right. but the replication for durability and availability in region is good. For accessibility of data, may, may, they may replicate, but not for durability. Okay, that was more so since you guys were leveraging DynamoDB for the metadata, and since we've sort of placed the value on the metadata, just trying to figure out how durable that is mm -hmm. from a regional outage standpoint. So uh, each region has three zones, right? Rarely ever a, a full region goes <laughs> up. And, uh, but it does happen. It does happen. Yeah. And it, it depends how, what's the price you, what the price customer is willing to pay to get that, you know, uh, mm -hmm. one extra nine in the five nines after five nines, right? So we haven't seen the customer demand mm -hmm. to do it. If ever, we'll <coughs> actually do it. No problem at all. Right. But I, most customers are okay with this four nines of availability and stuff like that. And I guess that there's different zones between the durability and availability. So yes, you're just in yes. one region, that's unavailable, um, but that doesn't mean you've lost your backups. That's right. Right. Seven yes. nines of durability and uh, and, and then availability, and then, then there are multiple service, right? Yeah. Some customers getting a console is more important than actual data being available as a backup service. So there are multiple aspects of availability as well. And if there's more price point, then we'll obviously go up the tier as the demand increases, but we can do that. Um, so from a, uh, again, from a core characteristic of the, of the file system, and how we develop, you know, de deliver the solution, right? We do source ID, right? So it's very, very important that, that we um, that we de the data at the source, right? And we're we're a cloud-based solution. Data is distributed. We don't want to move lots of data. We don't want to move it uh, repeatedly, right? So. Um, Incredibly powerful, powerful dedupe engine within the solution. Uh, again, in my experience working with this stuff over the last uh, you know decade, um, we have customers that are sending us source side tons of, of data, you know, uh, of you know hundreds of terabytes, and we are compressing and deduping it down to um, you know with forty percent less of source, right? I mean, it, 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 on an ongoing basis. So it's it's really impressive from a storage standpoint. And why that's important to the customer is that that's what we charge for, right? We only charge them for what they consume post-global dedupe. Right? So if your customer sends out, you know, backs up 100 terabytes of source data spread across 10 remote sites, and it dedupes down to 60 terabytes, that's their bill. That's it, right? So very predictable, very easy to manage. Um, and again, we're not doing anything special. If you send a bunch of movie files to us, right, we can't, you know, compress them or, you know, there's, there's nothing uh, super special going on there, but we'll never have to retransmit or restore that video file again, right? So there is dedupe going on in the backup job in the stat standpoint. Um, but um, you know, from a compression, might be a little bit limited there. Um, from an um, encrypted standpoint, right? We, we did go into the uh, you know being certified, and you know, we've, we've been audited, and you know, through the ringer, uh, you know, um, uh, security is very important, right? As a SaaS provider, if we're not secure enough, we're not going to get the you know get a deal, especially nowadays. Uh, so you know, what I generally tell customers is number one is that you know, we, who has access to your data? That's the number one question. And can you guys see my data? Do you have access to it? Who can restore it? The answer is the customer, right? We do not have access into it to the point where 
you know, we, we create a proof of concept environment for a customer, right? And it's generally how our sales process works. Um, we, the, the, the first administrator gets an email with their credentials to log into the console. The first thing I tell them is create a second administrator because if you lose your password, we cannot reset it, right? We have no ability to reset a password because if we did, we could intercept the email and, you know, someone could do it. So you want to have you know, two administrators in there um, to do it. So what actually happens if a customer loses their password? Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> yeah. So I think they have that. One or the other. We can either reset it for you. Like if we put it into the architecture, then there's a hole. So that's I, the back door. Yeah, right? I just have to jump in there. This is why you need multiple administrators, right? right? Uh, if you lose, if you lose a, if you if you have one administrator and you have one password and you lose that, you lost your data. So don't do that. Right. Have multiple administrators, multiple roles, multiple that, backup that's, accounts. That's not your problem. That's an industry scenario that you have to do that. That's how that's we meet it. Yeah. What the only way you're going to get protection to make sure nobody can touch your data. Exactly. So that's fine. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's not your. I've been at a company that the answer was well. a different. Yeah, we can reset your password. Well, who yeah. can get that? Who can intercept that email? Well, yeah. anybody. <laughs> right. So, yes, you either have it one way or the other, right? So yeah. we went. We went. How much that. damage could an angry admin do to I was gonna the backups? Yeah. Yeah. None. 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 Okay. I, I, th this was one of my biggest accepted. things because <laughs> <laughs> so this is one of my biggest things, um, and okay. we need to get to in sync. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is one of my biggest things that I ask question after question after question because I was not all cloud friendly when I first got here, right? And I loved all the answers that I got of basically all of the protections that we have in the back end, both from a rogue customer admin as well as even a rogue Druva person, right? So all of those things have to be there to pass all of the various certifications that we have. I think the question that was around a customer, if you had a yeah. rogue admin there. So there's went, nothing they can do from a long-term data you know, management, I mean, from a deletion. No, but they could go change all the passwords to just No, they can't. Crap. They but, can't. They can only change their password. Each, each user so has their no own. there's no master admin. There is, the, there is a master admin that we do recommend going to a per person with fiduciary responsibility, and then they should create um, the actual accounts that actually do the job. So we call it, there's role based in it, right? So you have an administrator, which does have the keys to the kingdom, right? So somebody who can go to jail for doing that should be the one doing right. that. <laughs> Got it. Also, we integrate with the uh, Okta and, and the general uh, uh, authentication providers. And the general recommendation would be to go and integrate with those so that other people can't, so that there's a practical aspect of that. Right. I'm not saying it's a bad thing that it's architected that way. Yeah. And I say that it's something that a customer that's not careful could get hurt. They, yeah, and it's the same with everybody. Very, very yeah. aware. Yeah. I mean, if you have that, those rights, you can do yeah. a lot of damage, right? Idiots <laughs> doing stupid things often die. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, well, but we do have holes in there as well, so you could limit that, right? Their ability to do any damage. But, but physically, right? I mean, again, this is a comparison that we have, we've had in the past, right? Is you know, with, a, with an on premises solution, an on site solution. Um, you can have, you know, someone can physically destroy your appliance. They can physically destroy your tape. Right? I mean, you can't physically destroy anything in our cloud, right? So there is a, a difference there. The security building, even if you have a hacked client, what happens if, if the client gets hacky? How much damage can a client do? How much damage an employee do? We have thought through all those things to make sure there's levels of security at each level. I, th I think that works yeah. the other way, though, because you could say that somebody who's got all their backups on tape somebody might not be able to go in and destroy them or damage them because they might be stored somewhere where they, they have yeah. got no, no access. Whereas when it's all online, somebody's yeah. got much more access. To yeah, so therefore, point, in yeah. some respects, yeah. you have to have better security controls than somebody who's just got it all on tape. Right, right. You know, and, depends and, how you look yeah, at it. Yeah, exactly. A good point.